Okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the first <laughs> meetup. And well, I have been speaking for a few minutes just alone because honestly I thought I started the <laughs> webinar, but yeah, so this is what I was saying that today's our first online event, so we still don't know like quite well the tool. So well, I will start over again and well, I will say everything that I was saying, basically. So welcome and thank you so much for joining today. Uh, for those who maybe might know us, we have been doing some events last year here in Berlin. And well, we have been celebrating events until the last January, but unfortunately, because of the situation, we couldn't continue. So now we want to try this new format, this online webinar that I hope is also productive and that you also enjoy. Um, well, first of all, um, thank you not only to um, you that are joining today, but also to my colleagues, Mike and Bea, who are here supporting me with uh, this webinar, so you can also see them online. And also thank you so much to Jenny from the Simplicity Diaries, who is our guest today, and we will have this interview with her. So she can also help us to understand better what is a zero waste life, how it's going through it, and many things that you are also learning in, in the way you know, to, to this sustainable living. But well, first, um, also I want to speak a bit more about me and who we are in general. So this uh, webinar is the first webinar from Zero Waste Club. And maybe if you give me just one second, um, I'm going to start sharing with you my, uh, yeah, my screen. So here it is, so Zero Waste Club. So some of you might have come uh, to us directly through our website. Um, many others maybe have found us uh, in Eventbrite. So basically, I would like to just briefly explain what is Zero Waste Club is. Zero Waste Club is basically a community that we are trying to build with you, with people, not only in Berlin, but around the world. Okay, so everybody is welcome. And basically, what we want to do with this community is create this space online in which we can connect with each other and basically learn from each other. So if you go to our website, you can find here a bit of more information. And there are like four uh, points that are basically what we can reveal so far about Zero Waste Club. So, as I just say, we're a community, everybody's welcome. It doesn't matter who, where you're from, where do you live, or it doesn't matter if you just started to be interested about Zero Waste, or if you are a professional uh, working in sustainability. So, Zero Waste Club is for you because we are trying to build this huge group with all kinds of backgrounds to be able to connect. Okay, and basically, of course, what is that we want to connect for? So to have an active change, because we really trust and would really think that the connections are important. And without joining with people from other places and understanding problems around the world, we are not able to, to have this active change and basically influence in a positive way that this is what we want. Of course, in our club, you can have the network. That is not the most important. No? That's a bit also a part of being in a club to meet people that have the same interests like you or that you maybe um, want to work in sustainability. And then you want to meet people who have the same interests or worries or something similar. And overall, the reason why we are here today, events. So basically, that's our first event, our first trial. Let's see how it goes. But with the time, we want to make this something we celebrate more often. As soon as we can, for those who are in Berlin, we will be having also some events um, here in the city. But of course, we're always going to try to keep online events because it's also a way to connect um, with the community around. And well, some of you maybe might not know, but Zero Waste Club is part of let me show you Zero Waste Berlin Festival. So Zero Waste Berlin Festival is what is the idea that made everything to start. 
Um, Zero Waste Berlin Festival is a project that has born after um, Zero Waste Berlin International. And basically, yes, as the name is saying, it's going to be in Berlin, but um, I invite you really to go to come to our website, zerowasteberlinfestival.com, and discover by yourself what we are going to have and also why is the reason that this festival is for you because well i have to say that um we have to announce that of course the first edition of the festival is going to be online so everybody can join and also the people from the club can join and also enjoy this opportunity so please come to our website discover why zero west berlin festival is also for you uh, you can find also all the categories we have in here, like everything we care about because we think zero waste is not only a concept that might be related to specific um, parts of your life, but we really think and encourage you to think that zero waste can be in every part of your life, like your home, your lifestyle, in fashion, in mobility, also self-care, travel, and activism so you can go here you can read a bit of those concepts and you can understand better also our our vision so now i think i'm not forgetting anything okay so of course join to our newsletter so you can get all the news let me go back to my camera so one second and i think i'm here Great, so now it's time for me to stop talking and welcome to Jenny for this wonderful interview we are gonna have. So please give me another second because as I said at the beginning, we are a bit learning in here and then I need to activate Jenny. Go, oh, hi Jenny. Hi. Okay. Yeah. I think that is working, right? Yes. Yes. You can hear Perfect. Me. So, okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Now it feels more natural for me. Also, like I was speaking here alone. Now I can see another person. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. So, well, Jenny, um, before I say anything about you, it's much better that you introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. Uh, anything that you think that defines you okay so my name is jenny obviously like you said already i am 34 years old and i am the creator and the author of the simplicity diaries which is a blog and a youtube channel that is built around eco minimalism so everything that has to do with simple living and sustainability uh, this is what i focus my content on and um it is my, it has become my hobby, but it is my true passion. This is what I live by. So whenever I post a content, whether it's on my social media or make a video or an article, I try to educate and inspire as many people as possible to make better choices. So more sustainable, more eco-friendly choices. And yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Nice. So you are also based in Berlin, just to say to our audience, because, well, sometimes what I see that maybe with the people we get along here in the city might be a bit easier for us uh, living in Berlin to have a sustainable life. But also we need to consider that sometimes people living in other cities don't have so many options, no? like we do. Um, so, well, before living in Berlin, um, or let us know maybe how long have you been living in Berlin and yeah, yeah if you have seen like having sustainable life after and before Berlin maybe yes. how uh, the path has been yes so I come from the Republic of San Marino which is a very small country that not a lot of people know about um, and I've been living abroad for over six years Berlin is my true first one and only love i am absolutely in love with this city i love everything about it and uh, i think i came on holiday here like six or seven times before moving here okay. uh, so yeah it was it, it was meant to be i guess and 
I also lived one year in Estonia. So I moved here in 2014. Um, long story short, because I'm from San Marino, I'm not a European citizen, so I need a working visa to stay here. And I didn't get one <laughs> the first time I tried. So I had a job opportunity in Estonia. I lived in Estonia for one year, and I think that was probably my most transformational year because that is the year where I started to live more minimally, when I started hearing about zero waste and I started making content. So it was very powerful as an experience for me. And then I came back to Berlin because like I said, it's, it's my true love, I couldn't do without. So I came back to Berlin and that's where I really started to make um, big changes. Um, before that, I think that I wasn't exactly a super eco-conscious person. So I think, yes, I'm recycling. I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I, was very, <laughs> I was very naive, like many people. And I thought, okay, I'm recycling. It's fine. Um, so I didn't have a lot of eco-conscious, um, like eco-conscience. Uh, I wasn't very into it. I guess I never educated myself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always, when people ask me, I always say that moving abroad changed my life completely because probably if I would have stayed back in San Marino, would I be this different? Did I, would I have made change, like changes this big? So that's how kind of it all started with me packing my things in a suitcase and then just exploring the world. That's, that's how everything started. And here you are six years later, no? In love totally with the city. Yes, <laughs> Sounds good. So you yeah. say like once you move abroad was the moment when you started to to hear about the concept of zero ways and sustainability and be more conscious uh, about it. Um, yes. Do you think that was this moment? What was this click in your mind that made you realize about that you needed to change your life? Um, I think if I really think about it, I was trying to make some efforts, but the moment that really made a difference, I was living in, in Estonia and somehow I heard about the documentary, The True Cost, mm -hmm. which is about all of the fashion industry and especially fast fashion and all of the horrible things that fast fashion does. Yeah. And when I watched that documentary, I realized that, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> I'm a horrible person. I need to change everything. Yeah. That's the moment where I realized that everything that we do has a consequence. Everything that we do has an impact. So I started with fashion, but it was like shortly after watching that documentary, I first heard about zero waste i watched a tedx talk of lauren singer from trashes for tossers so i started connecting the dots and i really knew okay this is my chance to make a difference and to change my life mm -hmm. yeah definitely because actually this documentary the true cause uh, i didn't watch it till last year actually i didn't know before about it um the fashion industry, yes, we are all aware about it, and we know the news from Bangladesh that happening a happening a few years ago. But I remember I watched the True Cause, and it took me two days to watch it because honestly, it was so strong. Like the you see, re everything you know or more or less know just to see and to see the people, and they are talking to the cameras. Basically, they are talking to you. So for me, yes, I have to confess, I cried a bit because I'm an emotional person. And actually, I, in some moment in the middle of the documentary, I said, okay, then for today I'm done, I finish it tomorrow. So yeah, definitely yeah, some of the people who are here are having doubts, just watch it. <laughs> because maybe... Yeah. Only recommend it, it's going to change your life. Probably, like you said, it's very powerful. So. It might be very hard to, you know, to process, but it's absolutely worth watching it. Absolutely. So if any if any person needs a push or a click, just call for it and go yeah. ahead, please watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, well, so I understand like you started to um, 
do things in your daily life to live more sustainable, to change step by step, but how did this idea of putting everything in a blog, so how this idea of the simplicity diaries started? Uh, I guess I've always been a creative person and I like the idea of putting my creativity in action or the ideas that I have in action. And when I was living in Estonia, I didn't have a lot of friends. My I was living a long distance relationship and I really started enjoying spending time on my own, <laughs> I didn't mind. And so I had this idea of um, kind of starting doing videos on YouTube for a while. And when I started changing my life, I, I said, okay, maybe I'll give it a try. But the whole Simplicity Diaries as a project, so blog and YouTube, um, as a sort of brand started when a couple of years later I decided to add to my YouTube channel also this blog. I love writing and I think I'm much better at writing than at <laughs> talking to a camera because I'm a bit camera shy. Uh, but that's how it started and like I said before I really like the idea of telling people what I know, what I learn, and what I like, and what I enjoy, and even what I fail at, so I can mm -hmm. maybe something to people, and I can inspire them and educate them to make better choices and to change their lives as well. Um, so it started kind of as a side project, and then it became my true passion. It is not my main job, so I have another job. I work in e-commerce, but when I ever, whenever I'm free, I try to dedicate more as much time as I can to it because it's it really what 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 I love doing. So nice. That's yeah. kind of it. <laughs> so well, here I want to make a small pause just to say because I just realized because today is our first webinar that I forgot to say to the people if you have questions, you can always post them here. Okay, in that you, we have a chat where our uh, Naek and Bea, our uh, mates are writing you all the resources, but also if you have any questions, we might answer them at the end of the talk, or like if it is really related really with something that Jenny is speaking about, feel free to put it there, okay? So we go back to your questions. Um, well, so basically, I um, just mentioned you have your website, you started with the YouTube videos. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the different concepts you work in your website? What is the project about? What are maybe your categories, your, the things you are worried about and the topics, the specific topics you speak to the people? Yes, so zero waste is obviously a big uh, focus. I like to educate people about zero waste, about ways, simple ways in which they can go plastic free, reduce their waste, be more conscious as consumers, uh, minimalism, so all the ways we can simplify uh, our lives by buying less and enjoying more what we have, so focusing more on the things that really matter. Um, since we spoke about briefly about uh, the true cost, of course, uh, everything built around a more sustainable wardrobe is also something I try to talk a lot about. Um, whenever I can, I try to talk about travels as well, trying, of course, to underline ways in which we can more sustainable, we can be more sustainable as travelers, because I think that's also really important. So I would say that I, it's basically in the big spectrum, lifestyle, everything around minimalism and sustainability and everything that is built around that. Okay, and um, now because we want to focus also this talk about zero waste a bit, inside all your big cloud of sustainability and so many topics, um, how was your experience with the zero waste concept? Because as you say, at the beginning we think we are sustainable because we are doing recycling or because we are doing certain <laughs> Or yeah, or I don't know, like I don't take a car, I might take a bike or public transport, like small things. But the concept zero waste, how how did it arrive to your life? How was your experience? How did you discover it? Um, so partly I discovered it because as I started doing YouTube videos, I started connecting a bit with the community. And so I heard about, hmm, what is this thing? 
And then I had uh, a friend sent me the link to this video. It was a TEDx talk from Treasures for Toasters to Lauren Singer. And it got me interested after watching the true cost. I realized, okay, I need to do something better. I know I can do something better than what I do. Recycling obviously is not enough. I remember that I turned myself to my recycling bin and my plastic recycling bin was exploding basically. So it was so full, I, I, I was ashamed of myself. So I said, okay, you need to start somewhere. You need to do something. So at first it was a little bit probably difficult to um, realize that it, it, it is impossible to produce zero waste, like any waste at all. So at first it took me a little bit to, okay, but as, as long as you're reducing your waste, you're already doing a lot of things. So I started very simply. Um, I was living abroad, the tap water in Estonia was fantastic. So I didn't know already that I was already kind of doing something sustainable because I wasn't buying bottled water. So um, yeah. that's something that kind of hit me. Wow, you're already doing something about it. Uh, so I started with small changes and then I tried to, as when I came to Berlin, that was easier for me. And then slowly, step by step, I started to implement as many changes as I could. Mm -hmm. and do you remember maybe which one were your first change that you say like, okay, the water um, was something you were doing unconscious, but was, was, what was the first active change that you say, okay, from today, this is over, I do this now or I remove this? Um, it was starting to carry a reusable cotton bag. That's something that I consciously did. I said, okay, when I'm going to the supermarket, I'm going to throw my cotton bag in my backpack so I don't forget it. And that's something that I still do to this very day. And then surprisingly, the menstrual cup. It was something that I was so scared of. I said, no, it's gross. I will never do it. And then I started reading kind of blog posts and articles as much as I could find. And then I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. So it was it was one of the very first things that I started using was switching to a menstrual cup. So those were the very first couple of things that I ever tried. Yeah, so yeah, easy actually. Um, yeah, so because basically to do groceries with a reusable bag is like the minimum no, that we can do actually because yes. Even now that supermarkets are not giving bags anymore, um, when you have this cotton bag in your own, uh, in your own backpack or whatever, it takes nothing of space, it's like tiny, and then you always have enough. And at the end, it's saving you money also, because if you forget to bring your reusable bags, or any other bag that you have, then you need to buy new ones and it maybe costs one euro or something like that. So it's... Mm -hmm. uh, Doing one, exactly. no? Yeah. yeah. And also basically for those people who are here today that say maybe the menstrual cup is something I'm not going to use, because, but it's always yeah. good to speak this topic for everybody because we need to be conscious about the reality and not uh, say because I menstrual cup is so, not something I will use because I don't need it. But it's good that you know because maybe you might speak about it to other people so they are conscious no? about it yeah so definitely the menstrual cup is something i really encourage also everyone to use because yeah it's a change like yeah for me it was something i knew about uh many years ago like five years ago more or less but it took me maybe two or two and a half years to really say okay let's give it a try you know but after that uh yeah something like yeah and you feel you feel good no because you actively see that yeah i'm not using any other things that you see the way so directly that yeah. is like <laughs> i'm doing my part you know? <laughs> i'm doing my part and don't get discouraged because i at first i would get so frustrated it took me ages to get used to it and to learn how to use it uh, also when i started using it it was I think October of November of 2015. So there weren't as many on the market as now. 
Now there are all shapes, all price ranges. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't work. Just a little bit patience. Give it a try. We can only recommend it. Absolutely. So, cool. So um, I want to now to ask you a bit also about the concept of zero waste because you just mentioned a few minutes ago that of course zero waste uh, might not be zero trash. That's a bit uh, impossible because also we need to realize much of the trash uh, that we produce are being produced not only when we buy the product but before in the production of the product itself no so it's also uh, a bit of being conscious of what we buy so what you will say that is the biggest misconception of the concept zero waste um it's probably this idea of zero that people might get this encouraged about the zero no i i won't i will never give it a try because i will never be perfect i will never make zero trash so i i just rather do nothing it is not like that so that's how probably as not counter movements but other terms started to pop out just like low waste or low impact probably to encourage people to you know you can still be sustainable even if you do little but as long as you do it you know don't get discouraged by this idea of perfection that's probably the biggest misconception about zero waste especially at the very beginning or there or maybe years ago where it wasn't as popular as now then there was you know a lot of bloggers or um, zero wasters had this trash jar so mm -hmm. there, it was kind of the trend of the moment everybody would put their non-recyclable trash into a tiny jar and for me that was super discouraging some people might find it empowering encouraging yes let's do it for me it was super discouraging so that's a thing that i struggled a lot with also personally and i think that's the biggest misconception you don't have to be perfect to be zero waste at all yeah i think it's good for some people who might maybe try and it's a bit of a personal challenge if you want really to dry the the trash in a jar but obviously, as you just say, it's kind of impossible, even if you really uh, reduce your consumption in all the areas of your life, sometimes it's difficult because we need to also understand that not everyone has the same resources around them or really is convenience or the type of life you have, if you have a family or a big family or you are an old person and you, or you have restrictions maybe in the diet, things like that. But at the end, the, the, the point is that you understand the concept and you try to do your best, no, basically, yeah. So Absolutely. what you say, of course, like maybe many people struggle thinking, okay, so it always means uh, trash in a year, so, but <laughs> it's not that, uh, but what, had been your biggest uh, struggles, let's say, switching to this zero waste life? Um, probably that I was focusing a lot on the mistakes that I was still doing that I could, I wasn't able to truly see and, you know, appreciate the changes that I already made. I mean, I already did a few things, but I would say, oh, I suck at this because I still haven't done this. I still haven't done this. I'm terrible at it. No, I, I don't, I don't have an impact, a positive impact on the environment. What I do doesn't matter. So these are the things that I found more challenging for me. Um, I had sometimes I, I tried a few things that didn't work out, but that's fine. You can always try better and do better. But for me, at the, especially the very beginning was okay. What I do doesn't matter because I'm I'm not good at it look at how many things I still do wrong and I wasn't even able to see or notice the things that I was already doing positively and I already changed so for me that was the biggest struggle and so it's still sometimes something that I I'm very hard on myself as a person so um, it's still something that from time to time I have to remind myself okay it, it doesn't matter if you do something wrong you can always do better as long as you're aware of what's you know your priorities are so, yes. absolutely 
Yeah, I think this is a concept that maybe for some people who don't know, it's called eco anxiety. So it also has a name. Uh, yeah, I've been through that as well. So it's really, yeah, it's, yeah, some days that you say, okay, what I'm doing this for, if maybe everything is out of uh, my control or it doesn't matter. But at the end, yeah, I'll say everyone have an impact. You might think, okay, I don't have an impact if I'm only one person. But right now, if one million people are deciding maybe to buy this product that is not sustainable at all, but then a new sustainable product that replaces that one is coming to the market, and then that one million people decide to buy this new sustainable product, then you is you are one just one just just one person, sorry. But yeah, many one is making the, that million. So the market will change, and then the other product that is not sustainable will adapt to be more sustainable or will disappear. No, so at the end. Consumers have the power, even if you in your house, you don't see it, but this is how the market is built, no? With the one single action after other is what is making the whole, exactly. the whole the, action. Yes. Uh, market how it is, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, you just say also like the zero waste concept can call it, you can call it in many ways and these things that you have been trying some things you have success you have not but so then what is zero waste not in your but for you what is zero waste for you in your life for me is like you mentioned earlier zero waste can mean different things so for me is personally zero to live zero waste means to do whatever i can so everything that it's my power everything that every single action that i can do to um, take care of the planet, whether this means to buy plastic-free produce, to not buy fast fashion, to reuse the same technology for years and years and repairing what I have. For me, this means zero waste, to have the smallest footprint that I can leave on the planet. Mm -hmm. That for me is zero waste. Yeah, and absolutely, because right now also some for some people might be like, okay, but you know, mm, yeah, you say it like this, it sounds easy, but uh, where do I start? No, what is the first thing I need to do, or how do I start to change my life if I look at my life and I have so much impact that is overwhelming and maybe I don't know what to do first. What would you say that could be a first step to have a serious life? So first of all, you can educate yourself. Now the resources are so many. There are blogs, there are YouTube channels, books, so many resources. So if you want to look for information and tips and ways to change your life and make it more sustainable. There definitely are many resources that are just one click away. And then my biggest tip, whenever somebody asks me, asks me this question, I just like to encourage them to look at their own habits. So it, you can make yourself a little bit of a knowledge, but it matters what your life looks like. So which one your habits are, what do you do on a daily life? write them down if that helps write them down and then try to start from there what do you which are your daily habits which are the things that you can change start from there try to see if you already have maybe some products that can help you with that start with what you already own and then make your way through a more sustainable lifestyle but you need to start from who you are and what your life looks like mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's your impact? For me, for example, it was really useful uh, to look to something that you do the most regularly. And in this, in my case, was groceries. So buying food is something you do every week, basically. And something you mentioned at the beginning, I look at my plastic, um, my plastic uh, trash. Yeah, and then I saw like, yeah, I'm recycling, but not. Then okay. <laughs> what can i stop uh, buying from here no and what um what can i change from today or from next week no so basically that's something that is uh, accessible to everyone and is something like 
everybody can do this week tomorrow basically no so um we have a question related also with the ways and is uh, lara is asking which materials causes most waste in your opinion and there and we that we have good alternatives for so material that causes more ways and that you can find alternatives for them um i think the biggest issue is always plastic we all know how plastic is damaging um plastic is everywhere it's literally yeah. everywhere you can be once you start paying more attention you realize that plastic is everywhere and i guess that the most sustainable i mean plastic can be useful in certain fields like medical fields or maybe some kind of technologies plastic is important the way that we can substitute it is just either nothing at all when <laughs> we can absolutely avoid plastic i'd say just avoid it and even i mean there are for example like biodegradable plastics these mm -hmm. type of materials they might be very helpful for some reason and i like the concept of companies or people trying to do something different but to me the most sustainable alternative to plastic is nothing at all in this case if i can or maybe no wait it depends um yeah. glass can be a good option because if you think about it, uh, you don't need to buy glass containers or glass things because you already, if you look in your pantry, you open your pantry, you already have plenty of glass jars. You don't need to buy them. Um, if you can replace um, plastic bags, you can make your own with your own scrap materials and you can sew your own. So you can definitely find some alternatives. For me, the most, the, the big monster is plastic and I try to find uh, any kind of alternative to it. I'm not very familiar with a lot of plastic alternatives in terms of um, sustainable plastics in this case, but my suggestion is always go for things that you already own. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. can avoid plastic, that's 100% that's better, but if you want to replace plastic, just look for alternatives that you already have in your home, whether that's making uh, reusing some materials to make your own produce bags, to use your glass jars that you have already in your pantry. Those are st kind of starting points. I don't know if this was the question. Or yeah, if I, I, yeah, I think a bit, uh, well, the materials you just mentioned, something that you can reuse over and over is glass, definitely, because many people don't know also um, the qualities of the materials and the time that they take to degrade. Uh, so basically, I would really recommend you to check a uh, number of years uh, that plastic take to degrade and um, things like that. So everybody can find easily really in Google information related to it. So according with what you see, the numbers of year and also how recycled they are, you can also understand that yeah, so I will not buy maybe more plastic, but I will buy things in glass or in a can because those are materials that can be recycled over and over again. And this is something that is really simple to know, but most of the people don't know. And actually, it's a bit surprising even for me, you know, I just discovered on my way of a zero waste life one day, um, I just read about it and was like, okay, so, you know, I didn't know about this uh before but yeah so yeah so as you also say there's tons of resources out there so people can really google any anything that pop up to your mind always ask google because for me that has been the way for understanding like everything maybe that i look in my life okay so um now i'm gonna focus in this how i can do it more sustainable so you search specific um questions you have and you can make changes no so many resources. yes even not, like you said on materials like if you want to know more about uh glass the impact of glass you can google it and you have a bunch of articles um metal or stainless steel are also good alternatives uh, they are more durable and can be recycled many times so whenever you have a doubt you can turn to google and <laughs> google will give you the answer basically so 
Yeah. Yeah. So we have another question also a bit related with these. Um, so do you know, well, maybe you know, but uh, a bit your opinion. So why the industries uh, don't choose to sell product in bigger amounts, like for example, toothpaste, that they only come in small quantities. Um, and yeah, they, they sell it in plastic tubes, so they are, of course, not recyclable. So what's this, a bit your opinion on that? Um, that's a great question. I think that probably it's because somebody has to profit from it. So there is always a reason. I mean, it might be, I might be a little bit um, critical or a bit too, you know, um, yeah, I think that the reason why a certain company doesn't start to do something more sustainable is because they have to profit from it. It would be great to find toothpaste, for example, in a big tube or in a big bin. So, you know, kind of a family pack thing. Um, luckily, there are alternatives to it. So you can buy, for example, the little toothpaste uh, tabs. So that, that's a good mm -hmm. alternative, but that kind of popping out and you can even find in uh, normal stores these days. But I think, it, yes, the, the main reason why they don't is because a big company, usually somebody is profiting from it. So yeah. that, that's my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, you just mentioned toothpaste, and actually it can go really related with the next questions I want to ask you, because toothpaste yeah. is this typical thing that many people start to do by themselves when they start to live a serious life, because we need yeah. to say sometimes for you it's more convenient just to have in the store sustainable products, because or you don't like or you don't have just the time to make everything by yourself but on the other hand there are people who really like to do products by themselves so i just want to ask you how are you going with that how is the doing yourself products uh with you so uh i love diy i don't do everything by myself but i love diy i think it's a great way to save money and to save trash like to avoid trash um yeah i started like you said with toothpaste maybe or i think deodorant was my first one and there are some diys that i kept for many years that i still do some of them i said okay maybe i'm not the best at doing this diy so it's it's about experimenting and i personally really like it so yes i still it's a big part of my zero waste life yeah, well, you lucky because I honestly really wanted to try so many things. The first thing I tried was to do um, a stop for the clothes for the washing machine. I follow uh -huh. on YouTube and that was a disaster. So I have, instead of a liquid thing, I have right now more than one kilo of some kind of fluffy uh, soap at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and I use it once and yeah my washing machine is also like not new it's a second hand washing uh, machine and actually I put it like the normal program of it and suddenly I went I hear some noise I went to the kitchen and I checked and because that salt was not liquid was blocking the exit and then the water was all over the kitchen so oh whoopsie <laughs> Whoopsie daisy, it happens. Yeah. yeah, that's happened, you know, and I think it's part of the process, as you say, and then you need to find your path, your way, and then maybe, yeah, from that day, I haven't recovered. I haven't tried anything new. I just need to do by myself because <laughs> that was a big mess. Yeah, um, yeah, there was many love at home uh, because of that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> And uh, well, we wanted to ask you, like, we have another question from Vanessa and um, related to the uh, do yourself products. So, do you recommend uh, any do yourself product for your skin routine? Um, in terms of skincare, I tried many things, uh, like going just with oil, mixing oils, and for me, particularly, it didn't work a lot. But I still think that you can incorporate maybe some oils in your skincare routine. It, um, it might help a lot. It also depends on your skin type. But for me, I've used for a lot of time um, 
uh, sweet almond oil or um, hemp seeds oil for my face and I still use it from time to time. So you can buy it at the um, health food store in glass bottles usually. So it's a great way to avoid plastic. Uh, you can, for example, make your own face scrub using coffee grounds. So if you have a coffee machine, a coffee maker, you can collect the coffee grounds and you can use those for make a face and body scrub. You can use um, honey or oats to make your own face masks. So if you need to kind of re plump your skin, you kind of have to rehydrate your skin. Those are all great ways in which you can find all of these things in your kitchen and produce literally zero waste in this case, because if you have any leftovers, you can just put them in the compost bin. And these are things that I personally have to buy from time to time, like real skincare products for those, you know, are made specifically for skin and I have very sensitive skin, but incorporating just these few things allow me to reduce my waste so much more and they work perfectly for, for my skin. So I highly recommend give it a try. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, definitely. This is something I'm struggling to to find the the good uh, skin products and to find something that is goes along with me. And I think it's something like many people also are. Well, it's something also it's easy to change, but at the same time, it's difficult to find what is right for you or like it happened with the shampoo for many people or things like that. You have to try over and over until you find the right uh, choice for you. So yeah, definitely. And while you have been speaking about a lot of success, a lot of things you have been changing, a lot of good things that have been happening, but there is something that is in your life for all these years and you say, okay, I haven't changed that, it was impossible, I couldn't find a more sustainable or because of my way of living is impossible to change. Yes, there are a few things. Uh, for example, um, I have been reducing my use of makeup a lot, but I go through phases in which I use makeup a lot and days or like weeks, months, like today, in which I wear no makeup at all. So when I do, because I don't know how long I'm going to stick to makeup, I buy cheap makeup from the drugstore. So I buy mascara, just two products. I use a black eyeliner and mascara, but I buy them from cheap from the drugstore, not even organic sometimes because maybe I I don't have a big budget for my makeup. So I just buy and buy the cheap, just go and buy the cheap alternatives. Um, that is something that I would really like to change more. And then also in terms of kind of body care. Um, I use safety razor, I use an electric epilator, but when I have to um, uh, shave my bikini area, I use uh, disposable wax strips because I mm -hmm. still haven't found the courage to try sugar waxing. So to make my own wax, I haven't found the courage. I think I'm going to make a disaster. So I buy, you know, the disposable strips. I, I know they're terrible but I just buy them every once in a while. And I, I, I promise that I, I, I know that I can do better than this, but I still haven't changed this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's tiny things along the way that you might find more difficult just because, yeah, um, it's convenient for you or you just, uh, you know, you like these, you try other things, you don't find your way, you know? Um, well, it doesn't matter, like, as you said at the beginning, it's not uh, needed to be 100% uh, zero, but just try the best you can, no? So, well, um, I would like to just ask you a couple of more questions before we finish. Um, and yeah. it's going a bit uh, to something different and a bit more, to be a bit more serious, um, I want to ask you like how or what is your trick to not feel overwhelmed with so many negative news about the climate change and that we only have 10 years in front of, if we don't do anything, how, how do you deal with that? Um, it's hard because like you said, eco-anxiety, it's a thing and it affects many people. My way or the things that I can recommend whenever you feel this way is to turn off notifications, do not look at social media because I follow a lot of eco 
accounts and I just get so many news and these are all news that your brain keeps on processing. So whenever I feel like I need to take a break, I just put my phone away. I don't watch the news. I don't look at social media for one day, two days, what, how long it's necessary. And um, reconnect with nature. That's the best thing. If you have a garden, spend time in your garden. If you don't have a garden, you can go in a park, take a walk in the woods, anything that can make you feel that connection with nature. Um, those are my top ways in which I like to deal with eco-anxiety. Yeah, that's a good one. Actually, I have been now in the last months trying also to go more, to visit more forests. That Actually, in Berlin, we have a lot of forests around us and it's really easy to go and um, be walking and you know when you finish you feel so good because you are disconnected no sign in your phone so you are that day all out and it's for you for yourself or the people who are that are with yeah. you, you know that day um so well as we say um some actions from you might help to change but what do you think uh, that is really the important the, the important uh, what are the important actions in here on a larger scale uh, do you think like zero waste can be really an impactful solution for the climate change yes i think it can um, obviously many factors are connected and involved but i think zero waste can be a great starting point because when you start being more aware about the trash that you produce then you start realizing so many more things about your habits, about your lives, about how companies operate, about many, many things that are related to climate change. So obviously zero waste is just one side of the spectrum, but I think it's a great starting point and it can have an impact. Because if we think about it, all of those plastic pollution, plastic trash, it's, it's, literally killing our planet and ecosystems are dying because of this and if we think about it all of these disposable plastic or disposable materials they do require lots of resources to be produced lots of pollution and lots of resources are involved within the production cycle so mm -hmm. if we're able to reduce our waste our plastic waste any type of waste we're able to lower our impact then we can reduce our consumption of meat and dairy, we can travel less, we can be more conscious about how much we buy and where we buy from, but zero waste, like you mentioned earlier, can involve many aspects of our life. So it's a great starting point, I think, when it comes to being more conscious um, okay. towards climate change. Definitely. I think really like climate change uh, is uh, an important topic and the way we can face it is not only one but we as citizens there are many kind of movements there is uh, all type of this Fridays for Future that the young generations are starting so it's really nice also to see that uh, people that are coming behind are also supporting this and you know I feel like we are the generation or kind of couple generation over them <laughs> but we we are going to be you know in the future living with these children and living with them and so each of us have a way of impacting and i think just zero waste is one of many other ways of being sustainable or creating some impact no on a larger scale Yes. So, well, so the time is almost over, but uh, we have one more question before we finish. Yeah. So I think we have three more minutes. Um, so this question is coming from Anne and is asking which sustainable brands you can recommend? Um, there are many. It depends if we're talking about fashion or if we're talking about something else. When it comes to fashion specifically, um, there are many great brands. I always recommend buy secondhand. <laughs> Go with the secondhand because going with the things that are already existing is the most sustainable way of doing everything, whether we're talking about fashion, furniture, home decor, everything. Uh, on top of my head, um, I really like 
Armed Angels, which is a German brand for fashion, for sustainable fashion. I think they're amazing. They're super transparent about what they do. Um, Berlin specifically had so many small brands. Um, and I can recommend if you are based in Berlin, eventually to check out um, Green Fashion Tours because they are uh, very involved within the fashion community in Berlin and they all support great local sustainable brands. Um, yeah, that would be it. This is what I, I on top of my head because there are many. Um, this is what it kind of. We, we don't have a lot of time left, so <laughs> I'm yeah. just trying to. In this case, we can always recommend the people they can visit your blog is uh, yeah. the simplicitydiaries.com. And yeah, so they can find there more information. Also, maybe they can read you on Instagram that uh, we always follow you and you're active you. in there. So yeah, so my colleague um, Nay has been putting also your everything you have been saying also in the chat. People, you always can find the links to Yanis' uh, blog and channels in general. So feel free to later on send any other questions you might have. We can always uh, abuse of Jenny one more minute to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we will send you everything in an email. So uh, before we finish, and just to have you here, Jenny, so we can announce it to everyone. Uh, I have I have been speaking about Zero Waves Rolling Festival at the really beginning. We already have the dates. They is going to be celebrated on the second and the third of September this year. Um, oh. Yeah. So basically, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's going to be online, but really we are going to put the same passion and effort that if we were meeting in person, so everyone is more than welcome. Um, yeah, so just write to us, uh, write to Jenny or to Zero Waste Running Festival. You can always talk with us and yeah, so we keep in touch. Thank you so much, Jenny, for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me, Coral. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was really great interview. It's always good to share opinions and share everything with other people. So, well, thank you so much also to everyone who came in here. I saw some people I know, so thank you also for friends and family to join. It's always nice. Um, yeah, I think we are not forgetting anything. So, thank you so much, everyone, and we keep in touch. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.